So welcome, bienvenidos to today's core coffee chat on seeding the future with semillitas. I'm Nicole Lezen. I'm one of the local consultants who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based or Core Investments, along with Nicole Young. We are your host today, and we're joined by guest presenters from Ventures, Dientes, and Community Bridges Triple P program, who will be introduced shortly. And today's session is held in English with Spanish interpretation. Gisela Carrasco is providing consecutive interpretation right now, and she'll also translate your written comments and questions in the chat. And soon we'll switch to simultaneous interpretation provided by Stella Lauerman. I'll turn this over to Nicole Young, who will give us a brief overview of core investments. Thanks, Nicole. So Core Investments, for those of you that may not know, stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we think of it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. So that's a lot of key words packed in that small statement there. But we think of it also in terms of the purpose and the vision uh, in these ways that really our purpose or mission is to inspire and ignite collective action so that our county is a safe, healthy community with equitable opportunities for all to thrive. And that we'll know we've succeeded when we achieve this vision where uh, our community is equitable, thriving, resilient, and we all share responsibility for ensuring the health and well-being of all people at every stage of life. And those mission and vision statements were created uh, not just by Nicole and me in isolation, but through a really collaborative process um, now a number of years ago. Next slide. And the core conditions for health and well-being are also a central element of the core investments framework. So we think of these uh, as really integrated, interconnected dimensions of well-being that need to exist, again, for all people across the lifespan in order to achieve that mission and vision for CORE. And so some of the key things here are that um, it's very hard to try to provide services or make systems changes in one CORE condition alone and be able to expect to see um, you know, tremendous changes or long lasting sustainable changes that really we have to be able to understand and identify and connect the dots between all these core conditions and understand how the presence or absence of well-being in one of these core conditions uh, is both a ripple effect of uh, well-being in other dimensions or a reflection of the absence of well-being in other core conditions as well. So this part here about the core conditions is uh, really, again, central to core investments. And on the next slide, you'll see that events like today's Core Coffee Chat are offered through what we call the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact, or Core Institute. So we think of this as the learning arm of core investments. There's, there are aspects of core where grants and funding are provided by the county and city of Santa Cruz. The Core Institute really focuses on building shared knowledge and skills and practices um, that really help promote again, the core conditions for health and well-being. And our agenda for today, on the next slide, you'll see, we'll first hear an overview of the Semillitas program. So the college savings uh, account program that is operated by Ventures, a local nonprofit. So we'll hear an overview of that program today from Crystal Gonzalez, who's the director of Semillitas at Ventures. And then we'll also get to hear from two of the Semillitas partners. So we have with us today, Kristen Glenn from Dientes Community Dental and Sandra Rodello from Community Bridges that is the main provider of Triple P, which is the positive parenting program um, that uh, both of those programs are partners with Semillitas that uh, you'll hear more about in terms of how families can uh, participate in services and earn what we call milestone deposits for their children's college savings account. So thank you to our presenters for being here today to, to share this great information. We will have time for questions after the presentations, but feel free to, to put questions in the chat along the way or share your comments. 
in the chat. We will also share links to the recordings of today's uh, presentation and the bilingual slides and other flyers and handouts. We'll share those in, an, in a follow-up email after today's event. It usually takes us a few days to get those ready and make sure that they are um, not only uh, edited, but also that they pass all of the Americans with Disabilities Act accessibility standards. So just to let you know, it sometimes takes us a few days to get all of that ready. But I will go ahead and turn it over now to Crystal Gonzalez to give us an overview of Samayitas. <clears throat> Thank you, Nicole. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, today I'm going to present on Samitas. As Nicole mentioned, Samitas is a program from Ventures. Um, again, my name is Cristal Gonzalez. I'm the Samitas program director. Um, the QR code you see there, you can access my contact information, my email and phone number. So if you would like to scan that in case you want to contact me, um, that's there for you. And our mission at Ventures is we want to build compassionate and equitable local economies that contribute to our community's well-being. We are both leading and serving the teacher and the student at all times in all roles. Our vision is together we are working towards a shared and prosperous economic future where zip code, race, gender, or immigration status do not dictate income or wealth. and who we are. Um, Ventures partners with rural Latina working class families in California Central Coast to ensure a shared and equitable future for all. Our transformational programs make certain that individuals understand and use their economic and political power from building their savings to advocating for a living wage or approach builds community and connects financial stability, wealth, being, and self-determination. Our work creates um, dignity by recognizing, acknowledging, and valuing our community members' leadership in making change happen. Together, we are working towards a shared and prosperous economic future where zip code, race, gender, or immigration status do not dictate income or wealth. Um, all of our programs are interconnected and are the vehicles from which we implement our vision. And DocuFund Monterey Bay is a rapid disaster response fund, an ongoing fund that supports work benefiting undocumented workers. Familias con Mas is an education and outreach program. It includes workshops, um, limited coaching, and contract work. ALAS is a leadership cohort that includes Familias con Mas curriculum, monthly coaching, and guaranteed income. And Semillitas is a children's um, savings account model that connects families to Familias Con Mas and other childhood programs. And Wild Fire Relief Services for Immigrants is a temporary partnership with the state. Um, and advocacy is regional and state people to support programs and the efforts above. Um, semillitas, um, today, like I said, we're going to talk about semillitas. You can go to the next. <clears throat> um, semillitas was created in partnership with the community. <clears throat> During the planning phase, Ventures conducted eight parent focus groups with participants from Live Oak and Watsonville areas. Participants were recruited in collaboration with our partners, and the focus groups were led by Ventures staff. Stipends were provided to all participants. These are a few recurring themes we gathered from the focus groups. Um, <clears throat> the community prefers milestone contributions over financial or savings match due to concerns around income and ability to contribute. Um, the community would like to see more resources and education for parents around college and parenting. This was seen as a critical part for the program success. And also, they believe the program would be better as a universal design over only focusing on low-income families. <clears throat> Semita's program design was shaped by the insights from this focus group, prioritizing communities' needs above all else. Uh, Semita's has three goals. Um, children's savings accounts programs send all the children the message that they have the potential and the support needed for academic success and economic mobility regardless of where they come from 
or their family's finances. Our three goals for Semillitas are to improve childhood development. Children's savings accounts have shown a positive impact on children's social emotional development. Two, we want to build expectations for higher education. We want to create a college going culture. A child with a savings account is seven times more likely to attend college than one without, regardless of income, race, or academic achievement. And lastly, um, build dedicated savings and healthy lifelong financial habits. Low income and minority families are overwhelmingly excluded from mainstream financial products that build wealth. <clears throat> Um, many studies have shown that children from low-income backgrounds with a college savings account are three times more likely to attend college and four times more likely to graduate from a university. One thing to note is that it does not matter the amount of money in these accounts. What matters is instilling college-going expectations and a sense of hope in families. Um, through these studies, we design a program with our local population and community. And um, what's the eligibility for Semitas? So <clears throat> everybody that was born, um, all babies that were born in Santa Cruz County after January 1st, 2021, they have a Semitas account. There's no need to enroll or register. We open an account based on the vital records that are sent to us. And this is a little overview of how Semitas works again. Where it's an automatic enrollment at time of birth based on vital records. So again, everybody has one after if you were born after that date on um, January 1st, 2021, you have an account. We deposit an initial $25 um, and an additional $25, um, so up to 50 based on income. And we deposit additional contributions based on health and educational milestones. And parents can do cannot donate to the Semitas account, but they could open up their own 529 account where they can see both accounts um, in that parent portal. I'll talk a lot, little bit about that later. And just to note, custodial accounts and 529 plans do not impact public benefits. So these are the milestones we're talking about. So currently we have a, up to $500 in milestones available before the child turns five. So that was a big win for us. And this is thanks to our partners. So one of our partners is Vientes. Um, they contribute in milestone deposits to our families when they go complete their first two, first birthday. And when they um, do annual visits all the way up to age two to age six. And Salud para la Gente does the milestone deposit of first two, first birthday. Um, with health, this is our recent partnership we have with the Central Alliance. <clears throat> our medical provider here in our area. And if parents take their child to get their immunization or their wellness check visits, they also deposit money into the children's savings account. For education, um, we do partner with uh, our Familias Con Mas team where they offer financial, financial fit workshops. And with Triple P, um, if people attend, um, parents attend the parenting education workshops, we also deposit money into their account. And lastly, with engagement, if they simply just open up their parent portal to check how much money they have in their account, we deposit money into their account. And lastly, um, the annual survey, they just participate, um, take the survey, give us um, feedback. Um, we also deposit money into their account. All of these milestones together add up to up to $500 available to them, by, again, by the time their child turns five. <clears throat> Um, child Semitas accounts, they um, earn, they grow free from federal tax. They can be used for higher education, meaning if you want to go to trade school, community college, university, they can be used for any of that. Um, not impacted if parent or child moves out of the region, if they move out of the state, um, but they already had it, we still um, give them that money. And this money is available until the child turns 26. If they did not access the money after they turned 26, unfortunately, the money does go back to the semi other Semitas accounts. And where are we? Currently, we have over 6,500 accounts open. There's 4.3 engagement, meaning we don't, that's how much engagement we have. That means like people that did the parent surveys, people that attend our parent workshops. 
Um, more than half of our CEMITAS participants have received the equalizer distribution. So this is the one based on income. So half of our participants have um, their initial deposit was $50 rather than the 25. I do wanna go back to the engagement piece. It does seem low, but I do wanna note that the state engagement um, is 3%. That's, so we're a little bit higher. Um, so that's why we're really trying to push this program out to everybody because it, well, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but we think this program's great and everybody should access it that has it. Um, so we're trying to connect with all of our partners because with our partners, it's not possible for our families to know or, you know, take advantage of this program. Participants, um, about 3,779 participants, um, about 60% self-report that they are Latino. And 36% of our participants um, self-report that they are white. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of our demographics right now. And most families with Semitas reside in Watsonville. About half of our families, 47%, live in Watsonville, and the other um, our other big percentage is in Santa Cruz with 25%. Um, and a smaller percentage of families reside in Freedom, at Aptos, Scotts Valley, Soquel, Capitol, and Felton. And these are our partnerships. So CORE is a three-year partnership we have from 2022 to 2025. Five and funds initial deposits and milestones. So it funds all of our opening accounts and certain milestones and also our staff. Um, Dientes, again, they fund our annual dental visits from one year to six years. Salud para la gente, the first to first birthday and triple P um, milestone deposit if you attend their triple P class. <clears throat> Central Alliance, <clears throat> sorry. I think I need water. It's a pilot program currently at Watsonville Community Hospital. So this pilot started, um, we've had this partnership since 2022, but we launched the pilot in Watsonville Community Hospital in July. And it, it's now expanded to Sutter and Dominican. And this also funds additional milestone deposits. And the pilot, what we're doing is with our first five partners, they go, um, to all the children that are born at the hospitals and let them know about Semitas. And they also let them know about the partnership we have with the Central Alliance. Um, this is a three-year pilot and we share our information with them. Um, and CalKids. So CalKids is the state version of Semitas. CalKids um, launched they um, support with outreach efforts. So they are one of our partners currently. And they promote, we promote our, our account and the state's account. Cal kids, um, all California newborns born on or after July 1st, 2022, they get an additional, de additional deposit of 175. And that's through the state. But what's different with CalKids is that they don't only deposit to newborns, they deposit through first graders to all the way to 12th graders, and they can get a deposit of up to $1,500. Um, challenges, again, it's the same challenge we're having. Families are not aware of the program and families are not accessing funds. So there's a lot of money that is being unclaimed um, because again, families are not aware that they have the program, they don't know how to access the money, so again, we're really asking for support um, to promote CalKids, to promote Semitas. Um, and we have quarterly, monthly workshops. Again, um, if you remember our milestone deposits, if parents attend our parent portal workshops, we deposit money into their account. And right here, um, they get to learn how to access their parent portal. Um, how they can monitor their account and check how much money they have. And we go a little bit more in detail on how they can access all the additional milestone deposits. We want to make sure they take advantage of all those milestone deposits and they do get the $500. And this is a commitment to our kids. Um, children's Savings Accounts Program send the, um, all children a message that they have the potential and the support needed for academic success and economic mobility regardless of where they come from or their fi family's finances. Um, we are coming together to invest in our children's well-being and the future of our county. And this is Bernardina's story.
I don't. I and Nicole, I'm not hearing any audio. Niña, ahí fueron unas okay. personas ahí en el hospital y me hablaron cerca de semillita. Yo me siento feliz y me siento orgullosa por saber que ella tiene semillitas. Estoy aprendiendo cómo, cómo apoyar a mis hijos para que ese logro que tengan ellos en su futuro. Me da gusto y estoy bien orgullosa y bien feliz sobre semillita. Mi esposa. Sorry, my turn for technical difficulties. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Um, I think there's one slide before. <laughs> oh, um, maybe not. Well, <laughs> I'll just say, um, finally, if you would like to be involved with Anitas, there are many ways to support. You can volunteer with us to help us do outreach with the families. You can be a funder, provide grants, or consider integrating milestone contributions into your programming. Um, or be a partner and just simply share information about the program with your members, patients, through your organizations and networks. And before I end, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our partners and funders, including CORE, HSA, COE, Viente, Salud para la Gente, First Five, and everyone else. And we appreciate your commitment and dedication to our Santa Cruz children. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, through our email or phone number or just simply chat. <laughs> And now I'm going to pass it to Kristen from the end to explain more about our milestones there. Sure. Thank you so much, Crystal. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Glenn. I'm with Dientes Community Dental Care. Um, I imagine a lot of you have heard of us and are familiar, but for those who aren't, um, we are the largest dental provider in Santa Cruz County. We have four clinics and an outreach program that brings services to um, other community hubs like schools, um, skilled nursing facilities, and more. Um, so here's a sneak peek of where our clinics are. Um, this year, we're expecting to serve around 16,000 patients, and um, a fair amount of them are children. Almost half of them are children, and so we're really excited about um, the partnership with Semaitas. Um, so yeah, so why are we partnering with Semaitas? So for Dientes, it's really our goal to make prevention more common than treatment, which means we need to establish good oral hygiene habits and health habits during childhood. So children grow up going to the dentist and with good home care, and then that really prevents problems down the line. And so our partnership with Semaitas, we saw it as a brilliant way and an upstream approach to really incentivize patients to come to the dentist early and to bring their children to the dentist early. And so, as Crystal mentioned, we decided to um, celebrate different milestones um, for each Semitas eligible child. Um, and so, really, it's important for a child to come to the dentist during their first, if when they have their first tooth or by their first birthday. And so, we um, deposit $50 into their Semitas account um, when they do that. And then for every annual visit, it's like continue to come back for regular care. We continue to contribute to their Semaitas account. Um, and then finally, when they a child receives um, a sealant, which is an evidence-based practice that is really um, known to pretty much eliminate cavities. And so we um, are really excited about our partner with Semaitas and, and some of the patients that we've seen, you know, have been really grateful. Um, when our staff when we know we have a semiotis patient come in, our staff do talk to them about the program and educate them. Um, and it's just a really brilliant benefit. It's a win-win all around. And so um, we're excited for the partnership and I will pass it on to Sandra from Community Bridges to talk about um, their investment in partnership with semiotis. Hi, my name is Sandra Rodelo, and I work with uh, First Fi and uh, Triple B with Community Bridges. I been a, a parent educator for almost 13 years now. And I've been helping the semillitas through uh workshops and um groups in the community. We, we can go to the next 
like uh, our Triple P program helps the community parents, um, grandparents, anyone that is uh, helping children grow to strengthen relationships, build confidence in their uh, parenting skills, and also prevent problems before they begin. And this is very difficult sometimes, but uh, we provide the tools that they can use to uh, get uh, the resources that they need. And I can we cut the next slide, please. Our triple P services are offered to the community uh, in different ways. The first way is our brief and in deep classes. We have seminars that um, are provided three uh, classes, seminars. We have workshops, one time class for uh, the community and groups that can be for front for weeks up to eight weeks depending on, on topics. Uh, These uh, groups are open to anyone in anywhere uh, to attend. They're all free services for all community members uh, in Santa Cruz and outside Santa Cruz. We also have brief and in individual consultations. These uh, individual consultations are only for uh, Santa Cruz County residents. And this uh, one on one classes, we help uh, from one day, just a little tip sheet on uh, different tools that we use on Triple P and how we can help parents with their um, parenting skills. Up to 15 weeks of classes. And again, all these all services are free through community bridges. We also have in the self-paced online programs uh, with very coaching, uh, virtual only. Uh, this means that we have we can provide uh, to our participants uh, a key so they can do it on their own pace through our website. I also wanted to mention all these services are provided now again in person uh, at the different locations through Santa Cruz County and uh, through Zoom for our virtual uh, clients. Next slide, yes. All, as I was mentioning, all these classes for Triple P are free. We offer in English and Spanish. Some uh, classes are bilingual. And on those uh, classes, we do offer interpretations. Um, like I mentioned, we are doing it in a virtual through our programs, to the program Zoom and in, in person. We have a calendar registration for all public classes at the website with the first five uh, to copy classes. And we also have a monthly e newsletter if you are uh, interested in that. Uh, signing up for the news later, you can also sign up in the website for the first by uh, Santa Cruz County. How we can, how we refer families, uh, we refer families to our first by Santa Cruz County phone number and uh, the information is there. Uh, there was a new uh, program manager, Yesenia Carillo, we still getting to know her. And uh, that, that's her information. They also use United Pass. United Pass, uh, we receive referrals for parenting classes. Um, so you need to still look for the first five in the cruise county with the Triple P, Community Bridges Triple P, and that will send the referral to me and my. Um, supervisor. There are independent providers also. Uh, if we uh, are not able to assist you, uh, they are uh, Corey, Glacio, and Lourdes. But uh, as Community Bridges, I am the main provider and program coordinator of the uh, Triple P program at, at Community Bridges. So when I get a new uh, referral, 
I am the one contacting and uh, setting up classes for the clients. And one more thing uh, that I didn't mention was the first slide for me is that when a participant uh, tends to our triple P classes, they get a scan too, so they can uh, get their credits for our classes. So we try and, and most of our classes with children are zero to five uh, with that semillitas uh, slide. So we can promote the services as well. Um, yes. So they do get a one time of $50 deposit with the Semillitas account. And uh, so far, families in my uh, classes are very excited about it. That's great. Thanks, everyone. So now that you've heard a little bit about Semillitas and what it looks like with some of the milestone partners at Dientes and Community Bridges, you know, we've had a couple enthusiastic comments in the chat um, about trying to do more to spread the word about this. So that's great. Um, what other questions do you have for the presenters or each other? How many of you knew about this program before? joining today. Dan and Pam, great. But new information for others? Ursula, I'm wondering if you could say a little bit more about um, uh, I know that there's the Semiitis account, parents can set up their own account and then there's the calc and so essentially there could potentially be three different yeah. savings so, accounts and that might be helpful to explain a little bit more and yeah i think that can get a little bit confusing so one of the reasons we were really pushing for people to log into their parent portal or to monitor their parent portal portal is because if they say they had a baby after july 1st 2022 they would they could see their cal kids money that they have in that account. They can also see the Semitas account. Um, and if they open their own 529 account, they would be able to see that one as well. So they could potentially have three, which is not true you know, to all the other counties um, because you know Semitas in, in Santa Cruz County, um, but if say their baby was born in Monterey County, they would only see their Cal kids and their own 529. Yeah, and one thing, um, one thing that I like to emphasize is, we're for the parent portal. We're not registering. We try to get away from that terminology of registering to your parent portal because, again, people have this mis misconception that they have to register to get semitas, and we're changing that to say, no, you don't have to register. You already have an account. We just want you to monitor your account um, to your parent portal. So I like to emphasize that. Um, because we don't want the community thinking that they need to open up their Semitas account. <laughs> Dan? Uh, thank you. Great job, Crystal, Kristen, Sandra. Appreciate the information. Uh, really, really comprehensive. You answered one of my questions just there, Crystal, about um, the Cal kids and participating in all the programs. So that's great that that can happen. I'm just curious as to the status of perhaps the other federally qualified health centers, uh, HSA and Santa Cruz Community Health, what their level of interest is in participating. I mean, you have Salud Para La Gente, you have the two hospitals. It seems that it would be great if we get the other two federally qualified health centers to participate. I'm, I'm just curious as to what that status might be, please. Uh, we do have a partnership with Santa Cruz Community Health um, with their pro promotoras. They do help us spread the word during outreach. Um, so we're trying to work with them a little bit closer. Yeah. But you yeah. a good point. I think um, 
we're trying to establish our relationships a little bit more with the hospitals and do a little bit more work with like the prenatal or, you know, where the ch children are born. Right. Well, other pediatric groups would also be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, just so everyone knows, I'm in active dialogue with Crystal to perhaps get this information on Skyo. And I'm curious as to what other folks think about that. Uh, just having the fact that a child is part of this program. We're also talking to dentists to work on dental information to really give that whole person view of the child. And, and I'm just curious if that's um, what other people think about that. We're working through consent. And so obviously if we had Santa Cruz Community Health and we had the county on, that would go a long way in solving some of our consent challenges because this is a required consent, if I understand correctly, Crystal. So currently, as mentioned earlier, um, first five are their baby gateway program. Goes to all the mothers that, you know, just gave birth at the hospitals, Watsonville Community Hospital, Sutter, Dominican. Um, and they provide them with a consent form because we do have a partnership with the COE. Um, so it's the partnership between the COE, first five, and us where we're doing the data sharing. Um, and that's to follow the child since they were born all the way to their school years. Um, and then they also provide another consent form because we now have a partnership with the Central Alliance. And in order for us to deposit the milestones um, available to them, then we have to be able to share information. But that's two consent forms that the mothers um, that recently gave birth are signing at the hospital. So we're just trying to navigate um, and see how we can navigate that process to make it easier for everyone. Thank you, Crystal. That's really helpful. Thanks, Dad. Any other questions, comments, ideas about sharing this information? Yeah, if you um, have any programs in mind that you think would could help us or would benefit from, you know, sharing this information, please reach out to me. We're always willing to do pres presentations to parents, to staff. Um, Nicole will send the flyer on, in the follow-up email. And we're also doing a flyer for our milestones deposits because I know a lot of people are interested in how to access that. So, if you, again, if you have any ideas, please feel free to reach out to me. Because again, we can't do this um, work without our partners. We only have um, Semitas as a team of two, <laughs> but really we rely on all of our partnerships um, to help us with this because we really want the community to take advantage of this opportunity. I just wanted to add to Crystal that I know um, that when it comes to the milestone payments that uh, you've had, you have these great partnerships established the, the money for the milestone payments um, comes from particular funding sources. And so if there were interest in adding different types of milestones or increasing payments or having different um, types of services be able to earn well, that that all requires uh, identifying additional funding sources. So if any of you are in positions where you're doing grant writing or you are a funder or you see that there's an opportunity to um to you know pursue additional funding like that could also be a good conversation to have with ventures around partnering to see um because i know that there have often been ideas about oh that would make for a great milestone but then it's <laughs> it's where you know where yeah. would that funding come from Thank you for that, Nicole. Um, we are always looking for new partnerships and you're completely right. Um, there's always great ideas, but sometimes the challenge is we need the funding for that. And with the state Cal Kids program, is that also an automatic enrollment or is there something that parents or, or guardians have to do in order to have that account set up? It's also automatic enrollment um, at the time of birth, but parents um, do need to log into their parent portal. And for the birth one, there's no income requirements, but for first through 12th grade, there is income requirements. 
And um, that's why we say up to $1,500 because um, it's depending on your income. And at birth is 170, up to 175, I believe. And then it's only the local semiitis program that has the option for the milestone yes. deposits, right? That that's really unique to Santa Cruz County. Yes. Yeah, and it's also compared to other um, children's savings account, our program is unique by us um, partnering with like health sector, with dental and, you know, wellness checks and all of that. Um, other, because we really believe, you know, we have to invest in all of that. Um, like Kristen said, um, preventative care, upstream care, that's what we're trying to go. Other questions or comments? Besides my dogs. <laughs> okay, I'll let you know about a couple other upcoming events. So later this month, we'll have another in a series of joint presentations with data share that are under the umbrella of a beginner's guide to data literacy, but they're not just for beginners. They're just, uh, we're trying to make the whole data share platform more um, accessible and familiar, especially leading into the um, core RFP that's going to be issued later this year and other grant writing efforts that people may be engaged in. And so um, we encourage, if you haven't already, uh, we encourage you to attend one of these workshops, bring your questions. Um, we'll do a, a deeper dive into several of the core conditions um, and we'll have an opportunity to answer specific questions you may have about navigating the sites, how to interpret indicators, and other good stuff. Um, and then we'll continue this conversation in February with uh, transformational approaches to creating economic equity. That'll be um, a, a view of other ventures programs and other efforts to, to look at system-wide work that really does change the underlying conditions for health and well-being uh, through these programs. So, so today you heard in depth about semiitas, and if that's of interest about um, some other ventures programs that are tackling some of the same systemic issues. That's, that's your chance to hear more about those and, and ask questions as well. And we encourage you as always to let us know about any topics that are of particular interest to you that would be great for this format. We, um, we appreciate your being here today, but we also know that there's an audience for recordings that we um, provide in English and Spanish. So we're always on the lookout for things that will be of interest to the broader community and just let us know when you when you have those ideas and we'll follow up. We also really value your feedback. That's part of how we try to continuously improve these offerings. So it's important to us um, and we pay attention to, to what you tell us. So please do fill out these feedback surveys, you can use the QR code or join the, the um, link in the chat. And most of all, we just wanna thank our presenters for being here and sharing all this great information. We hope this leads to lots more um, engagement. And we also wanna thank our, our great team for interpretation and translation, Stella and Gisela, and all of you for being here. Any other closing thoughts, Nicole, or any of the presenters? I just wanted to mention that um, First Wife's new Triple P program manager is actually on the call today. She uh, oh, was okay. able to join. So Yesenia, uh, if you want to stop your, yeah. Yesenia, there she is. So welcome, Yesenia. Hey, <laughs> she is also learning about the Triple P program and all the different partners like Ventures and Semiitas. 
welcome, Yesenia. Thank you. It's nice to be here and really nice hearing about all the programs and ways that Triple P is engaged in that program. So thank you. Great. More to come. All righty. We'll hang out for a few minutes if anybody has any last minute lingering questions or comments. But otherwise, we'll see you next time. And a belated Happy New Year to everyone with our, our first core coffee chat of 2024. First of many. Thank you all. And thank you for having us. You're most welcome. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>